children's king Sing, sing, chorus of angels Star of morning o'er Bethlehem sing He lies with the beasts of the star Who is maker and lord of the sun The wintry wind In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening, everyone. And you're all very welcome on this very special evening to the St. Faulkner's Church, Ross Carberry. This is a very holy evening, and we welcome viewers from all over the world particularly those who are associated with Ross Carberry and the district of Ross Carberry. It has been a very strange year and we may not be able to meet in person this Christmas, but we're able, with, with technology, we're able to connect up with each other. And this is why we're celebrating with great joy in Ross Carberry this evening, the celebration of the birth of Christ. The story of Christmas is well known. Millions of people have taken it on to believe that the child Jesus came into this world. There are many people, of course, who have rejected the gospel, who have rejected the message of the child Jesus. But there are many of us who have failed in our responsibility in 
accepting the child in our lives. So we're asking the Lord now this evening for pardon and for strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone at the Holy One, you alone at the Lord, you alone at the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We pray. O God, who have made this most sacred evening radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of the light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. First reading, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. On those who live in a land of deep shadow, a light has shone. You have made their gladness greater. You have made their joy increase. They rejoice in your presence as men rejoice at harvest time as men are happy when they are dividing the spoils. For the yoke that was weighing on him, the bar across his shoulders, the rod of his oppressor, these you break as on the day of Midian. For all the footgear of battle, every cloak rolled in blood is burnt and consumed by fire. For there is a child born for us, a son given to us, and dominion is laid on his shoulders and this is the name they give him. Wonder Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Why does his dominion in a peace that has no end for the throne of David and for his royal power, which he establishes and makes secure in justice and integrity. From this time onwards and forever, the jealous love of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord.
Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. God's grace has been revealed and it has made salvation possible for the whole human race and told us that what we have to do is to give up everything that does not lead to God and all our worldly ambitions. We must be self-restrained and live good and religious lives here in this present world while we are waiting in hope for the blessing which will come with the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour Christ Jesus. He sacrificed himself for us in order to set us free from all wickedness and to purify a people so that it could be his very own and would have no ambition except to do good. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census of the whole world to be taken. This census, the first, took place while Quintilius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to be registered. So Joseph set out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee and traveled up to Judea, to the town of David called Bethlehem, since he was of David's house and line, in order to be registered together with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they, were the while they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. In the countryside close by, there were shepherds who lived in the fields and took it in turns to watch their flocks during the night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them. They were terrified, but the angel said, Do not be afraid. Listen, I bring you news of great joy, a joy to be shared by the whole people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord, and here is a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly with the angels there was great throngs of heavenly hosts praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest of heaven, and peace to people who enjoy his favour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen. I bring you news of great joy, a joy to be shared by whole people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. My dear friends, we have just read from the Gospel how the child Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem. We weren't given a date or an hour, or the moment of the child's birth. All we know that he was born in Bethlehem. In the inn, there was no room for, for his mother and Joseph, any other place except in a stable. Right throughout the Gospels, of course, we know about the story of Easter and about its association with the Passover meal. So Easter is celebrated in the spring of the year. So why do we celebrate Christmas, the birth of Christ, when the weather is cold, dark nights? There's very little to celebrate. This year has been an exceptionally difficult year for many people. Financial, socially, people who are grieving, who are finding the loss of their loved ones. But for the last two to three months, our lives have been elevated by our the national games, the football, the hurling, the camogie, the ladies' football, Munster Championships, Ulster Championships, Connacht Championships, Leinster Championships, All-Ireland Finals, played in the month of December. 
Who would think that we could celebrate these events on these occasions? But it did happen, and it elevated people's lives. And this is what Christmas is all about, the birth of the Saviour that has uplifted us as a people and as a nation. We are told also the story how it was the shepherds, the people, nomadic people, who were living out in the countryside, who were up on the side of the mountains in the dark nights. The shepherds were feared people because they were often accused of stealing at night in the towns. But twas the Lord chose the shepherds to let him know the good news. Something exceptional happened. The exceptional news was that God entered the world through the child Jesus. And it is with great joy we celebrate Christmas. Yes, children are excited this evening all over the world. There's great happiness and peace. We pray for that peace amongst us. Peace, not alone today, this evening and tomorrow and the following days and months but we have to be active members of our Christian faith, following the ways of the Lord, letting the Lord direct us in what we say and do to each other. We pray this Christmas time that we will all join happiness and peace of the wonderful news that Christ, the child, peace, child was born for us, a wonderful counsellor, a prince of peace. So now we stand now for the prayers of the faithful. God has spoken to us in the word of the scriptures. We now speak to God as we make our prayers of intercession, expressing our cares and concerns. We pray for the Pope and for all those with teaching responsibility in the church. May they explain the Christian message clearly to those who seek a deeper understanding of what the faith means for their lives. Lord, hear us. We pray for those places where there is war, violence, and conflict. We ask the Lord's blessing upon all those caught up in the resulting upheaval in such, such situations. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who are homeless at this time and for those who are working to help them survive. Lord, hear us. We bring before the Lord those of our community who cannot be with us at this our celebration of the Eucharist. May they be aware that they are with us in spirit. Lord, hear us. And we pray, we remember those who have died during the past year and those who are thinking of them, especially at this time of Christmas. Lord, hear us. God, Lord our God, we present to you these and all the unspoken prayers of our hearts as we celebrate the birth of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, we share the divinity of Christ, who help us to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sins. Let us pray now that our sacrifice of the bread and wine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord receive the sacrifice of our hands to the praise and glory of his name for our benefits and the benefits of the Holy Church. May the oblation of this evening's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our minds, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of all things invisible. And so with the angels and the archangels, with the thrones and dominions, with the hosts of power of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Fintan our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we now say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all our distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We now look into our own hearts to search for peace, peace within ourselves, peace with our families, peace with our communities, but most of all, peace in our world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. Say but the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the Feast of the Redeemer's Nativity may, through an honourable way of life, become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Our prayer now for the final blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who, by the incarnation of his Son, has driven darkness from the world, and by glorious birth has illuminated the most, this whole most early evening. Drive out far from your darkness of vice and illuminate your hearts with the light of virtue. May God, who will the great joy of his son's saving birth, be announced to shepherds by the angel. Fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. And may God, who by the Incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gifts of peace and favour, and make you sharers with the Church in Heaven. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit go now in peace to love and to serve the Lord. And have a good evening.